Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TTT Tom's Tech Time. Today we want to take a closer look at the DJI Mavic Pro, but you should note one thing, you're watching one out of three videos in total about the Mavic Pro. You can of course find the links pointing at the other two episodes in the video description below or in the playlist and of course you can find a link pointing at the entire video in the video description below as well. But right now, let's get into this. Enjoy the episode, stay tuned, fly safe. The DJI Mavic Pro features quite a few intelligent flight modes. Let's just take a closer look at them, even though I'm only gonna rush through as otherwise, if I would go in depth, this would take another 45 minutes. In gesture mode, you can autonomously take selfies. You don't even need to hold the remote controller in your hands anymore. You just wave at the Mavic, perform a gesture, and the picture will be taken only seconds after. Point of interest is a great tool for cinematic movements. You can fly perfect circles around obstacles fully autonomously and have the camera point at the center of the frame meanwhile. Of course you have various speed settings, you can fly clockwise or anti-clockwise etc. In active track mode, the drone will follow you around. It keeps you in focus at all times and tracks you with the camera. You won't need any extra devices, such as GPS wristbands, the remote controller or whatsoever. The collision avoidance system keeps the Mavic Pro safe and can even navigate it around obstacles meanwhile. The terrain follow mode works together with active track. It basically ensures that while you are running or biking or driving up a hill with the Mavic Pro following you, it won't crash into the raising ground. It will hold its altitude above the ground level even in difficult terrain. Follow me mode is the little brother of active track. It makes the drone follow around your phone's and remote controller's signal. It is fully GPS based, which makes it a weaker tracking tool than active track by far. It's neither precise nor very useful due to the minimum height of 10 meters. You think the tree in the back looks interesting? Just tap at it and in tap fly mode, the Mavic Pro flies there on its own. Life can be that simple. The home lock mode is an older safety feature with which you can easily get your drone back to your position once you lost orientation in air but are still connected without the need of activating the return to home. The waypoints feature allows you to record a flight route and refly it later. This can be helpful if you need to perform a crazy camera movement. While the Mavic flies the route, you can rotate the drone, change the gimbal tilt and create the perfect shot. Unfortunately, we cannot set a flight route on a map, it's a plain reflying tool only. Finally, there is Course Lock, it's my favorite mode. Of course, there is a tutorial of mine showing and explaining you all its details. It basically allows the drone to fly straight lines while you rotate the drone. This allows you to create cinematic shots with ease once you understand how to use it wisely. Let's right now take a closer look at the intelligent flight battery of the DJI Mavic Pro. The intelligent flight battery of the DJI Mavic Pro has a total capacity of 3830 mAh. It features two fast release knobs at the side, a power button and four LED power indicators at its top. Throughout my testing I was able to measure average flight and charging time values that I now want to share with you. When hovering only, the battery lasts around 20 minutes and 44 seconds. And when going for an average flight that includes some flying in the sport mode, filming, location spotting, etc., it lasts even longer, approximately 21 minutes and 38 seconds, which is half a minute more than what DJI promised us. Charging an intelligent flight battery took me exactly 1 hour, 6 minutes and 45 seconds, going from 15 to a full 100%. If we take a look at the charger itself, we see that it features two USB ports, which is pretty cool, as we do not have to carry around an extra charger for the remote controller and of course we can use an Android charging cable. Talking about the remote controller, charging the RC took me exactly 1 hour, 52 minutes and 4 seconds, again charging it from 15 up to a full 
Let's right now talk about safety. And I know that this topic is a little bit dry, even though I will try to keep it as entertaining as possible, even though we should keep in mind that safety first should be our motto because we just don't want to hurt people. And next to that, we have invested more than $1,000 on our drone and we just don't want to waste it. The first little bit of extra safety is the second compass that DJI installed right into the body of the DJI Mavic Pro. And having a second compass is something really important because flyaways now belong to the past almost completely because usually the compass is in charge for the flight directions and we shouldn't confuse it, but that happens from time to time. And with a dual compass as with the DJI Phantom 4, this makes the compass rock steady, which means um, that if one compass fails, the system is just gonna use the second compass. Secondly, we have to talk about the return to home function, which is really important and of course built in to the Mavic Pro as well. It basically means that once you're up in the sky and you're losing the signal from the remote controller or something else happens, you won't lose your drone because the drone is simply going to autonomously return to the home point. And usually the home point is the takeoff position. But the cool thing is that you can change the um, home point's location through your smartphone as well. This is pretty cool. You can have, for example, the home point following you around the position of your remote controller and smartphone. For example, if you're on a moving platform like a boat or something, this can be really, really helpful. Or you can just reset the home point to any location that you want. And there is another thing that we should keep in mind, which is the return to home altitude. And some other drones still have problems with the return to home altitude, but it's really important. Just keep in mind you're flying back to the home point and there is like a huge obstacle in the way. What happens, the drone might crash. Even though I can already tell you that we have obstacle avoidance as well. But technically it would crash and then fall down. We can, before every flight, just set a new return to home altitude. For example, if I'm flying around normal trees, I just set 40 meters to be the return to home altitude, which is absolutely fine. The drone raises its height and just returns and lands safely at the home point. Now that I have already mentioned the obstacle avoidance, let's just cover it as well. We have two front facing cameras that give us a front flying obstacle avoidance. So there are no um, sensors at the side or at the back, which is a little con, but still we have like, um, the two cameras at the front, they work at daytime only. Keep in mind that during nighttime, it's just too dark for them to see any obstacles to spot anything. So you can use them during daytime flying and they really do their job quite well and they do their job better than I even thought. Just take a look at the app. We have like a bar at the top of the app and that pops up once um, it detects an obstacle. And we, even though we can try to fly forward as fast as we can, but the drone will just stop and hover. So there is no chance or possibility to continue our flight. And for example, if we have the drone following us in active track mode or something like that, um, we can set the obstacle avoidance sensors to make the drone stop in front of obstacles and then fly around these obstacles to continue um, the active track. This is actually pretty cool. The maximum range is about 15 meters which is fine for normal fast flying, but of course you cannot use the obstacle avoidance sensors in sport mode. That would just be too fast because the uh, stopping distance, 15 meters would just be too short for sport mode. After pilot errors, I think battery failures are one of the main reasons why drones still crash. And I think we can avoid those crashes with the DJI intelligent flight batteries quite well as these batteries really deserve the title intelligent. Just take a look at the Go app, open up the menu, tap at battery, and you will find many, many information all broadcasting live to your phone. And um, it's just amazing how much information we get. And we can, for example, set everything ourselves when, for example, we want to have the notification, the pop-up for the low battery warning appearing. It's just incredible how much real-time information we get, how much information we get on the battery's health, etc. It's just amazing. I think the most important feature made by DJI to the intelligent flight batteries is the so-called smart return to home. And you should definitely have that enabled. It basically means that normal drones just fly away and at some certain level, for example, 15%, they notify you and say, okay, I am low on power, you should return. But what happens if you at that point are too far away, you just won't make it safely back home. And if you're overseas or whatsoever, you might just have a crashed drone and we just don't want to have that. And the smart return to home feature kind of takes over because it in real time calculates all the data. It calculates how far you are away and how much battery life is left. And depending on that, at some point it will tell you, you need to return home. Now, even if you are, for example, still having like, I don't know, 40% power left, but you will otherwise not make it back home safely. And you can 
at that point, either let the drone take over and um, return to home um, automatically, or you can cancel that and take over yourself and land yourself. This is like a really, really, really good tool and a lifesaver. Okay, guys, I think we have seen the Mavic Pro from the front too many times. Let's just take a look at its bottom. And at the bottom, we find plenty of sensors. And these sensors are called VPS. Altogether, they make the vision positioning system. And this system is really cool. And it works up to a height of about 10 meters, which is really strong. And it basically consists out of two sonar sensors. They will help the uh, Mavic Pro when flying low to the ground, um, keep its altitude, which means that it won't just uh, drop or uh, raise its height. It will just um, hold the drone on a steady level. It's really working well. You saw that when I was flying in the studio before. And now flying in the studio, talking of that, flying indoors without GPS and GLONASS, this basically means that the drone usually would drift around. But these two bottom sensors um, avoid that from happening because these two bottom sensors are cameras and they just track the ground. They just look for a clear pattern and if they can find a pattern, which most of the time during normal daylight happens, and they just track some specific points. For example, if um, the remote controller would be lying on the ground, it would now track the remote controller and it would just hover right above and keep its position. It's really a powerful um, tool and I think for indoor flying, it's a must. Have you heard of GPS and GLONASS? Probably of GPS, but the Mavic Pro even supports the Russian system. It's basically satellite systems and with those satellites, um, the Mavic Pro can um, locate its position and always um, hover steadily even if there are stronger winds outdoors or something like that. You might have seen that the Mavic Pro is pretty solid in air and that is due to um, the capability of uh, receiving a GPS and a GLONASS signal at the same time, which means that the Mavic Pro can um, lock up to 20 satellites all at once and this is a big pro as most other drones only have a GPS connection and this baby supports the Russian system as well. Another big safety topic is the app that we're using and I have seen super weak apps for example the one made by Unique for the Typhoon Age but I think DJI is far ahead of the competition when it comes to the app. And that is simply because they are using like the same app for all their products, which not only is very comfortable to the users because we just don't have to learn everything um, from the start on when we get a new drone, but basically we have so few bugs and we have such a powerful system because the system is already experienced. The Go app, for example, supports the Phantom 4, the Phantom 3, the Inspire, the Mavic, the Osmo. So many products are already working um, on the DJI Go app. And I think now that the Mavic is added to it as well is a big pro. And um, you are working on a very well working app that works fine on iOS and on Android, even though iOS always tends to work a little better. Are you still afraid of crashing your drone? Even though I can really tell you it's kind of hard with the Mavic Pro. Uh, it just has so many sensors and the intelligent app and all the sensors at the bottom and stuff. But still, if you are afraid, and I can understand that, especially as a beginner, you should spend the 99 extra bucks on the DJI Care, um, which basically means that if you crash your Mavic Pro into something, um, DJI will replace it up to two times and all the details on the DJI Care, there is a link on that in the video description below. You can check it out yourself. And if you're a beginner, you might just purchase that as well, even though I personally did not purchase it until now, but that's up to you. We are not done yet, but let's come to a first conclusion. I really did not like the plastic bubble. I think DJI should build a new one that doesn't create such bad like streaks and reflections. Even though the new manual focus is a plus to me, I still miss an infinity or autofocus function. This should be fixed somehow. Next, I must list that it's a little sad that there aren't any official holders for iPads or bigger monitors available, even though I'm pretty sure you will find plenty 3D printed ones soon. Maybe take a look at my must-have gadgets page as well, tomstechtime.com slash gadgets. Still, as with the famous DJI Phantom 4, I'm missing a full 360 degrees obstacle avoidance system. And finally, I think DJI should enhance photo resolutions and give us higher frame rates for high quality slow-mos in the future. On the other hand, we now have the pros. The size is absolutely incredible. It really fits into every bag or bigger pocket. And this is like a dream to travelers. The tripod mode is insanely powerful and will make your aerial videos look a lot more professional. A small change for DJI, but a big step for filmmakers, so to say. The maximum range is awesome, even though I personally do not really need it. The narrow field of view of the camera offers a look that reminds us of real film cameras so much more than all the other wide angle drone lenses available. 
And next, the VPS bottom sensors do their job awesomely. You can really fly in areas with zero satellites without a problem and the hovering accuracy is insane again. The Wi-Fi mode is pretty handy for fast and on-the-go shooting and active track and terrain following really change the way that drones can autonomously follow people. A powerful tool that I wouldn't want to miss. The Go app with all its settings and sharing and editing possibilities is until today the most powerful drone app you can install. Finally, even though you might not want to hear it, I need to say that the pricing tag is really fair if you compare the Mavic Pro to drones manufactured by other companies. This is the most powerful compact drone I have ever seen and it costs only slightly more than some of its competitors even though it offers three times as many functions and features as the others. My final conclusion on the DJI Mavic Pro. I think to drone enthusiasts it's just a must-have. And even to filmmakers like myself, I was pretty critical with it at the beginning, I must say, because I just thought that the tiny small camera just couldn't keep up with the bigger cameras as we know them from the DJI Phantom 4 or 3, for example. But I think um, the narrower field of view is just a game changer. And if you only aim to create the most beautiful aerials, you should go with these big drones. And of course, portability, no. There, let's not talk about portability when it comes to these big drones. And um, I think the DJI Mavic Pro just does the job just fine. Of course, it has some uh, cons as well to it. I think there has not been a perfect drone yet, but I think I'm in love with it. And I'm just gonna fold it now. Saying bye-bye, by the way, product links can of course be found in the video description below. And the hottest DJI deals at tomstechtime.com slash deals if you want to purchase one yourself now. Well, I'm just gonna take mine, pack it in my little bag and just enjoy another flight. Stay tuned, fly safe. Thank you for watching this episode of Tom's Tech Time. Feel free to subscribe to never ever miss any upcoming episodes. And of course, feel free to leave a thumb up to show your support. And if you want to support my work, check out tomstechtime.com slash donate. You cannot only donate, but there is a free way of how to support Tom's Tech Time. You can read through that stuff if you think I should continue creating awesome videos, comparisons, how-tos and stuff. Um, yeah, and finally, I can invite you to Facebook, facebook.com slash group slash Tom's Tech Time if you want to join the greatest drone community on the globe. And what is there left to say? Of course, you can check out the hottest Mavic deals at tomstechtime.com slash deals. And finally, that was it. And right now, I just want to enjoy another flight. And um, yeah, I'm just going to turn the camera off for now. 14 days filming, that was a lot. And I would, of course, appreciate your support. Thanks. Stay tuned. Fly safe. Welcome to the all-new Tom's Tech Time website. Let me show you around. Dozens of how-to videos, reviews, and comparisons are waiting for you. All categorized, all free, all ready to watch. At TomsTechTime.com, you're only one click away from our highly viewed segment, The Drone Film School. There you can find video lessons, buyer's guides, and many filmmaking templates. Don't own a drone yet? Click the Deals page and find the hottest offers on the web. And if you already have a drone, enhance its capabilities with the most highly recommended accessories for filmmaking, safety, and a better flying experience. TomsTechTime.com, teaching the world how to fly drones.